Oh, right, so a nice little question now about transition elements. First of all, it wants me to do uh, define the term transition element. Um, you know that it must form at least one ion with a partially filled D subshell. Let's see if ion fits it. Ion, the atom, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d6, 4s2. Fe2 plus, remember by losing from 4s first, so it's going to be. That and then Fe three plus is going to be all of this, but with three D five because it's lost another electron. So yeah, it does it does fit that trend. Oh right, so now this is a question telling me all that you know about uh, copper chemistry, um, and it wants me to talk about precipitation and ligand substitution. So let's do uh, precipitation first of all. For that, we would add sodium hydroxide solution. You would observe a blue precipitate, and the equation would be copper 2 plus aqueous plus 2 OH minus aqueous goes to be copper hydroxide 2 solid. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much your good mind. Ligand substitution, actually, well, you've got various ones. Um, let's do copper surrounded by six water ligands, um, adding in the four ammonia ligands gives me NH34, H2O2, 2 plus. And that's also going to be my four H two O. I need uh, to add ammonia solution to get that to work, and I would observe for that a deep blue solution. Okay. Uh, right, a little bit about platinum chemistry now. Um, Use oxidation states to show this is a redox reaction. So I have got platinum reacting with hydrochloric acid and nitric acid to give me hexachloroplatinic acid and nitrogen oxide. So platinum metal has oxidation state zero, but in H2PtCl6, what's the oxidation state? Well, that's going to be each hydrogen is plus one, and I've got two, so I call it two. Each chloride is minus one, and I've got six, so well, that's minus six. So in order to get that to work, platinum must be plus four. So platinum has gone from zero to plus four. What about for nitrogen? In nitric acid, HNO3, nitrogen there we know is plus five, and that's gone to nitrogen dioxide, which is plus four. So I think we can safely assume that is a redox reaction. Write an equation for this. Okay, so you have got platinum reacting with hydrochloric acid and nitric acid to give me H2PLCO6 plus H whoops, plus NO2. Platinum, hopefully you can see up here, has changed by in oxidation number. Each nitrogen only changes by one, so I need to time those for that each of those by times each of the nitrogens by four to give me that. Um, obviously, I've got six Cl there, so I need six HCl there, and um, I've got too many hydrogens this side, so I'll need some water knocking around. Uh, let's have a look, do you reckon it's going to be uh, four waters? Oh, right, I've now got to draw um, the hexachloride platinate um, iron. So I'm going to have, if you, if you have a look, you've got six chlorides. So if you get your bonds right, surrounded by your six chloride ligands, 
Um, if you just want to really balance stuff up to the exam, let's stick arrows on it as well. Put it in square brackets. What's the bond angle? Well, the bond angle you know is octahedral, 90 degrees. What's going to be the charge? Well, ammonium is plus one, and I've got two of them. So overall that's a plus two, so this must be minus two overall. Oh, right, a little bit now about um, bidentate ligands. Uh, Nice little uh, complex, uh, little square plane uh, and platinum. Um, what is meant by bidentate ligand? Um, it's a ligand that can donate two pairs of electrons to a metal ion to form two coordinate bonds. So two low pairs to form two coordinate bonds. In the boxes below show the structures of those two ligands. So those are my bonds there. So first one. Is just that you're going to copy, copy these boys out really. Um, now, if you think about that, is actually going to be a dicarboxylic acid, so it needs a minus charge on each side. And you kind of should, well, you should hopefully be able to tell it's going to have a minus charge because it's platinum two plus. So that's obviously that is a neutral ligand. It's a diamine, isn't it? Um, this one's got to therefore have the two minus charge to balance out the plus two on the platinum. So it's so our favourite now, um, electropotentials. Whoa, we've got a mega table there. So it takes some time to digest it. Student sets up a standard cell to remove it based on two and eight. Let's draw it. So I have got to use two and eight there. So. Two beakers. In one beaker, I need one mole per decimeter cube of Fe, three plus aqueous, and also one mole per decimeter cube of Fe, two plus aqueous. The electrode for that is going to be platinum. Connect it up to a voltmeter. What's going to be in my Next beaker, that's going to be number eight. Oh, I can use chromium for that. I've got a metal. So into that, I just need one mole per decimeter cubed Cr3 plus aqueous. Don't forget, you also need a salt bridge to connect it all up together. Um, and that's pretty much it. The next question wants me to write the overall cell reaction to what's happening. So remember I'm operating on 2 and 8. Uh, 2 is the most positive, isn't it? So that's going to go that way. This one's the more negative. But if you look at it, that's got 3 electrons, that's only got 1. So I need to times that guy by 3. So I'm going to end up with 3 Fe3 plus aqueous plus chromium solid goes to chromium 3 plus Aqueous plus three Fe two plus aqueous. So uh, the next part is so I need to find the standard cell potential for these two. So it's the difference between that one and that one. So it's going to be uh, 0.77 minus minus 0.74, which is 0.77 plus 0.74, which comes to 1.5 volts. Um, from the table, select the strongest oxidizing agent. So the strongest oxidizing agent means that it itself is really easily reduced. And if it's easily reduced, it means it gains electrons really easily. So the most powerful one is going to be from equation three, and it's chromate in acid. You need both of those because both of them are involved. If you just had chromate, it wouldn't work. Okay, I'm going to keep the table up because it's quite useful. It says, um, using the redox system, construct an equation for acidified dichromate of six ions, which um, are these boys, and methanoic acid. So methanoic acid, now you've got to be careful here. 
Methanoic acid appears twice. You've got to work out which one is it going to be. Well, hopefully you can see that this one is the most positive out of both of those. So that's going to go that way, which means it has to be that one, doesn't it? Because that's the one that gets reversed. So um, this one has got six electrons in. That's only got two, so I need to times this one by three. And so I will end up with it being Cr2O72 minus plus 14H plus goes oh, plus this guy, three methanoic acids goes to three CO2 plus six H plus plus two Cr3 plus plus seven H2O. Um, and if you have a look, you can see I can cancel that. I've got 6H plus there that can go, um, and that's going to leave me with 8H pluses there. Uh, right, so for this one, I popped up the two equilibrium, they want to, two electron potentials they want me to talk about. Uh, student added some chrome metal to a silver clues containing copper two ions, and the reaction took place. Concludes that chrome was more reactive than copper. Explain this. Why is chrome more reactive? Well, it's because um, the cop the chrome one. This is a more negative one. So that one's got to be reversed, which means that copper has to go that way. That's the more positive out of this. So the copper one will go from left to right um, because the chromium electric potential is more negative. When this reaction was carried out, it served some bubbles of gas. Why do you reckon it's um, well, if you think about it, uh, chromium is, is, is uh, fairly reactive in terms of becoming chromium 3 plus. Um, so it's actually going to react with H plus ions um, in the acidifying solution there to give me hydrogen gas. And uh, then just moving on quickly, um, methanoic acid has a common. Uh, okay, we'll have to go back to the table for that one. Uh, right, so the next one, methanoic acid has a common name of formic acid. Um, and we're developing fuel cells based on this. In the fuel, so methanoic acid, the fuel reacts with oxygen to generate a cell potential. Predict what it's going to be. So, oxygen, where have I got oxygen? I've got oxygen in four. So, it's oxygen gas that has got to go that way. It reacts with methanoic acid. Again, it's got to be that one that gets reversed because that reacts with that. Um, to give me that. So what's it want? It wants to give me the cell potential. So it's the difference between 1.23 minus minus 0.22. So 1.23 plus 0.22 is 1.45 volts for that. Two advantages of using methanoic acid. Well, methanoic well, the is methanoic acid is a liquid, much easier to store um, and transport around. Um, also, uh, it's a lot safer. Hydrogen gas, as you know, is very explosive. Um, maybe a little bit why have you got a, a tank of hydrogen gas in your car?